Ta -da, ta -da. Hello! <laughs> we're back! We're back! Happy New Year! <laughs> Even though we're like more than halfway through January. <laughs> Listen, it's there been were things. Nutty. It has yeah. there were things. There was lots of stuff going on. But hi everyone, it's Friday and Paint and Slay is back for 2024. Uh, I'm V, this is Lauren above me, and in this episode, we're gonna be painting a mini. Shocker, I know. <laughs> Actually. We're gonna be painting a larger mini. We're painting a larger mini. We're, we're painting a mini to the point where it's like, I can't put the rigging system any higher, otherwise I'm going to keep banging my nose. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, this is this is the mini we're going to be painting today. This is the WizKids D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Min Miniatures Young Black Dragon, which is a pretty sizable fellow. Um, this is a standard medium, and this is essentially a gargantuan one. <laughs> Yeah, for a um, young, young dragon, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is what we're going to be working on for the next three to four episodes, depending on how we do. Um, but we're also going to have some fun and do some kit bashing of the base. And uh, we'll get more into what we're going to be doing with this. Uh, but first, Lauren, we have a couple things happening with the game. First of all, we have our current champion. Who's Who, who should players make sure they're logging in to see this weekend and claim if they haven't already? I mean, your your favorite tanky, tanky tiefling in mine, Mama K herself, Carlac. Yay! Um, yeah, yeah. I'm currently romancing her in my playthrough with Luke, and it's an interesting I... experience. <laughs> We've been doing a co-op playthrough together, and he's romancing Shadowheart, and I'm romancing Carlac, and we just got to that point where the both of us, the, the romance got heavy, and it's like, I'm sitting next to my husband doing romances with characters. This is fun and weird, but it's Carlac who is just amazing and wonderful. And yes, you still have a couple more days to unlock her in midwinter. So yes. make sure you, you get her and get a whole bunch of gear for her and uh, use her because she's awesome and amazing. And also if you pick up this uh, this theme pack, you get Clive the Animated Teddy Bear, which is amazing. And it also- so wonderful. I mean, not only am I romancing her, but every once in a while, I just try to talk to her just so I can hear her talking about Clive. Aww. It really is. My I love heart. it so much. My yeah. heart. See? Hmm. Wholesome. Love it. I'm here for yeah. it. Um, so yeah, we have Carlock, and then don't forget, it is Friday, which means this is starting up. Yeah. This is related to season seven, which has been the Rivals season going on. So we've got both Celise and Virgil in there, along with Artemis, uh, Celeste, and Brunor who are all getting nice buffs for the weekend. So if you need a little bit of help getting those last couple of runs through on Carlac or doing something else, uh, they'll be able to help you out a bit more. And also if you're signed up for our newsletter, you will sometime this afternoon be getting a mm -hmm. newsletter from us that includes a chest code for a free gold allies chest, um, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I know we've been having a lot of chests that have like sparklers and all oh, sorts yeah, of stuff yeah. going off. This but, is like, just this like, very, I like yeah, it. It's very classy. I like it. I've been playing Sea of Thieves and I saw that chest. And I'm like, that's what I'd want to dig up. <laughs> <laughs> it's an anchor. No way. Well, Psycho that's where man. my brain went. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. It could be anchor. Anchor could be anchor. <laughs> it could be. It could be a pickaxe or it could Ooh, be. Oh, that's a good point too. I mean, that way. <laughs> Minecraft to want to have a gold pick. Did right? not want to have a gold pick. They were actually real bad. They actually, no, those those aren't so good. But it looks like the pick in Minecraft. You're right. The shape of it. Absolutely. Very familiar. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, we have a few things happening this weekend. And, again, if you haven't signed up for a newsletter yet, make sure you do. Once a week, we send you something free is basically how to look at it. And then every once in a while, we will send you another newsletter for important news and updates about the game itself. But mm -hmm. that's not something we make as a standard practice happens all the time. That is, it's only used when absolutely needed and necessary. We want to make sure we're reaching out to everyone, you know, who needs to know the information. So yeah, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter yet, log into the game after the show. Uh, log into the game, get yourself signed up, and then you'll start getting lovely emails that have newsletters that tell you all about, you know, free gold fill in the blank descriptor chest is essentially how yeah. it works. <laughs> you'll also immediately get a newsletter that includes a code to unlock hitch in your game. So if you're new to the game yeah. and haven't unlocked that champion yet, absolutely go forward. Um, yeah, and, and the irony being that of all of the times of the year that we send out those extra chests the last like month, there's been a couple because holidays mm -hmm. and things, but yeah. almost all of them have also included free stuff. Yes. So we, we try to be very, very uh, cautious. About we come bearing gifts. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> Thank you for subscribing to our newsletter. Here's Hang something on. free. Here's something free. You know what's also a gift? Having Gabe in our chat, who is our yes. moderator for our show today. Thank you, Gabe. If you do have any questions for V and I about Idol Champions, about mini painting, about uh, the fun that we've been having in Sea of Thieves and Minecraft, go ahead and put those mm -hmm. in chat with question in big capital letters right before your question. That way Gabe knows to grab it and stick it in a little backstage document so that when I am very, very distracted painting this this bad this bad bad dragon boy bad uh, i don't miss your question there we go all right perfection so uh let's jump into this miniature this is where miniatures i'm like yes it's a mini but it's starting to get into it's not quite the maxi like tiamat it's not a maxature yeah, but know. it's getting to be sizable when my rigging has to change on how i set up for these streams that's when i'm like oh we're getting into the bigger boys um, yeah. So the thing to keep in mind is that when you get this, I can't even get it fully in frame, uh, when you get this dragon, it actually doesn't come assembled like this. You're going to get it so that you will need to attach the base to the dragon. Now, if you look, this is a key insert, which means you can see there's this very specific shape in the belly. That means you need to find that notch in the base itself, which is really hard to show because hi, the base is clear. But yeah. trust me, there's a notch right here that my fingernail is sliding into nicely. You use that notch to line up into where it needs to go into the tummy and you'll use super glue to attach and everything like that. But the nice thing is by not having the base attached, it makes it easier for us to get to all angles of this dragon, which will come in handy soon, trust me. And then we're gonna um, have the base and get that painted up, but do some fun kit bashing with the base. Because for those of you familiar with black dragons, black dragons tend to layer up in swamp-like environments. So yeah. we're actually gonna have some fun and create a custom kit batched base for this black dragon. And Lauren, I know you went into our Discord and you shared the supply list and everything of what you're gonna need, because this is a slightly different supply list. I put in the types of things you will need for completing the base, like how Lauren and I are going to do it on the stream a few episodes down the line. So if you wanna take advantage of that and join us in painting, then make sure you go to our Discord, discord.gg, Wait, you say yeah, it, because yeah. my brain just went like discord.gg slash idol champions. champions, right? Why there is my go. brain you going, right. no, you're wrong. <laughs> I think I have too many Discord channels, it's why. I mean, don't we all? Oh, <sighs> so many Discords. Yeah, but, but I yeah, literally Discord.gg slash idol champions. You. Come to the Paint and Slay channel. Uh, and the pinned messages in that channel include not just the black dragon, the young black yeah. dragon, but all the minis that we have done if you want to go back into uh, see earlier minis and follow along. And now I'll drink because I'm required yep. to every time I say it. Exactly. Dice, I'm going to call you on the you don't actually need to glue the base to the dragon on. If this is a miniature you plan to have either on display or use it for gameplay, I'm going to recommend that you should glue that. Um, because what I have seen happen is the base disengage from the mini, the mini falls, the mini gets damaged, and there goes your paint job. So glue your minis to your bases. Uh, yes, it is a tight fit. However, it is not a secure fit. And sometimes because of heat and or transport and storage, the miniatures and their bases can sometimes warp and shift slightly enough so that you might have a more loose connection than the same mini might have from a different packaging situation and storage situation. So always glue your bases to your miniatures if you don't want your paint at risk. Um, just a little FYI there. Um, okay, so with that being said, we're gonna do this sort of toggling back and forth today because we're gonna do a couple things on the Dargan itself, but then shift over to the base to let things dry. Um, but, you know, if, if you follow me on socials, you saw I had fun, you know, I see a dragon and I want to paint it black. We are going to be We've painting black. We've been waiting. Yeah. <laughs> it's been 91 episodes of waiting for this <laughs> moment right here where it actually yeah. works exactly how we want it to. It does. It does work beautifully. So we're actually going to start off. You're going to hear a lot of paper flipping because of the way I did my notes on this one. So we're going to start off with scarlet red because we want to paint the inside of that mouth first. It's going to make it a lot easier to paint it now as opposed to trying to get back in later once we get all the other details going. So grab yourself some Scarlet Red. This is a uh, paint that we're using from the D&D &D Prismatic Paints from WizKids. Now, Scarlet Red does show up in the Vallejo paint line as its own independent color. There are some specific paints to the D&D &D Prismatic Paints to keep in mind. Hint, hint, you can tell by the names. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let's get the Scarlet Red and we're going to put it all inside the mouth. And again, when it comes to the mouth, you don't need to be to be to be to be. That's all, folks. You don't need to be too precious about um, how neat you're being. 
And this is where I'm going to be playing uh, camera toggle a lot today because of mm. going out and then going in. So do, 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 do. I meant to kept that up, but I did not kept that up. This is one of the many reasons in why we're budgeting four-ish episodes. That that fourth yeah. one, depending on where we there are, we might do something else if we get done. But that's why we're just we're just giving ourselves plenty of time yeah. so we don't have to rush, so we don't have to be worried about timing. Uh, it's it's just. You know, there's no rush. It's a dark no. Enjoy the okay. process. Speaking of, I was showing cobalt scales. So I was talking about scarlet red. This is the color we want. Scarlet red. I just realized I grabbed the wrong reddish bottle. <laughs> <laughs> they are fairly close. Yeah. All right. So we're doing the whole inside of the mouth and the tongue. Yes. Yep. Mm. Exactly. And if you get it on the teeth, that's okay. Because uh, honestly, the teeth are going to be something we do a little bit further down the line because that's a detail that can easily be done and uh, sort of cover up whether we get black or whether we get red in certain areas. Mm. So just a fly in that respect. I think I'm gonna start with the roof of the mouth and hold this sucker upside down. And you're gonna have to do a little bit of like a pointillism, point, point, point type of thing to get into the recesses of this mouth because this is a, this feels funny saying it, this is a long mouth. It's, you're not wrong. And and that tongue is getting in the way. And yeah. it's, I, I totally, this is another one of those moments in where not having to worry about getting on the teeth is really, really helpful because I yeah. don't know if there'd be any way I could conceivably paint this mouth and not get red on the teeth. Like, I think that'd be practically impossible. Yeah. Definitely impossible for me. And I'm also glad I just that find, I thought to grab a small brush. Yeah, it, it helps to sort of um, reduce the anxiety when it goes to paint this. Like, oh my goodness, but what if I get the what if I get the red on the teeth? Yes, okay, we'll take care of the yeah. teeth later. Um, oh, thank you for all the gift subs, Bellswin. Thank Belswin. you, Bellswin. Uh, if you got any of those gift subs, uh, make sure to let Bellswin know. Uh, thank you and enjoy your yeah. emotes. We don't do a ton of dice rolling on this channel, but you know, if you ever want to just put a natural 20 in chat. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue. I'm not gonna fight with you on that one. Yeah. Roof of mouth. Burk. Pokey pokey. I may have to grab an even smaller brush. You know, it's possible. Um, And don't forget there are those lovely, you know, how, you know how in the art they have those monsters opening their mouths and there's that line of flesh on the side, the, the, yeah, these yeah. have this. So there's actually a little bit of red that's going to pop out right here. On I'm side also, of the mouth. I also like how you can very clearly see the webbing between yep. the claws of the front, the front feet. Oh, I love that detail. That's always yeah. fun. That's going to come into play when we start doing some work on the uh, wings. Wings and webbing are going to have the same colors. Spoiler alert. Um, okay, I think I got all of you. I think I'm going to try and find a more narrow barreled brush. I can't get to where I need to be because this barrel's too thick. Yeah, I'm having that same issue. It's not necessarily the, the brush size. It's the, it's the, the metal barrel. part. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to try my red grass. Red grass. My red grass detail brush. Mm. Yeah, Bar -bar -bar -bar. McTribble is, says, to be fair, good dental hygiene requires you to brush your teeth. Something tells me this, this dragon not necessarily brushing their teeth every day. Probably. They're crouching their bones. I guess, yeah. You know, like you give but a dog a bone. When's the last time <laughs> you, can, you can give a dragon a bone? Uh, but when is the last time this dragon has seen a dentist? Although they're, I mean. I mean, could have very well have seen a des dentist. It's just, did they give them a chance? <laughs> they gave him a chance and then also had a snack afterwards. It was mm -hmm. it was a twofer. It was it was a twofer twofer. It was a... Uh... It was like movie and it, what is it a theater and dinner type of deal it's dentist and dinner <laughs> dinner and a movie <laughs> dentist dentist and a snack mm -hmm. exactly why not yeah that helped shifting to my uh red grass detail brush and i am so getting red on these teeth but that's okay oh yeah because mine, the tongue I mean... is actually poking through between the teeth so what will happen is if you don't, if you get worried about getting red paint on the teeth, you might miss some of the areas where the tongue is sticking out and then you'll finish everything up and have like this white peeking through. 
Yeah. And that's why, once again, it's going to be harder to see on my camera, but that, that's why I I just didn't even bother I'm to worry about precious. it at all. And I'm just, yeah, just getting all the, the red everywhere. But it's a black dragon, so it'll get exactly. mixed. It'll get covered up. And even if it doesn't, uh, maybe this thing just had a meal. There you go. I think... I'm trying to do that thing in where I'm looking at it from all angles under the yeah, light the because same. I know the one place I miss will be the one place I see, like, episode oh, three of this dragon right? be like, well, crap. And my brush is, like, deciding, oh, you want me to be a point? No, I'm going to flare. Whee! But again, because I know what we're doing later, I'm like, meh. So there's red on the jawline. It's going to get covered up with black. That pretty much takes care of things. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think. Oh, see, I know I'm not because I can see there's this track of white that's happening between the tongue and the teeth themselves. Hmm. Yeah, that specific spot is real, real hard. Yeah. Talk about flossing. Trying to floss my tooth, my toothbrush. No, my well, it is a toothbrush right now. My detail brush between the teeth and the tongue. I think that did the trick. Yeah, this is one thing. of the other reasons I'm just getting red on the teeth and not, <clears throat> excuse me, worrying is trying to get under the tongue. I feel like it's just easier to yeah. poke through the teeth in a couple places. Yep. Agreed. Yar. I do love how consistently when we do these large minis, uh, we always seem to start with one of the smaller details. And it always makes sense why, mm -hmm. but... I know before I started learning from you how to paint minis, I would have looked at this black dragon and gone, well, I got to start with painting it black. Yeah. But Clearly this makes... It's, black. it's a black dragon. Let me grab right. black. Let me have fun. But this <laughs> definitely makes sense. There you go. All right. Okay. So now we're going to let that mouth dry, provided you're happy with the coverage. I think so. Sweet. Now what we're going to do is let that red dry because we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing detail on that mouth before we move on to edging with the black and everything like that. Um, so while we let the red dry, and trust me, you want your red to dry before doing any dry brushing because red likes to play with other colors. In fact, it likes to dominate other colors. <laughs> so yeah. you want to make sure it's dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the base um, and we're going to paint the stones with dark I'm flesh sorry. tone. Mm -hmm. I have to interrupt for just a second. Cat's Tease Sweaters says, can lesser restoration remove gingivitis? Just have a regular checkup with a cleric. I love that so much. I mean, isn't that what I, clerics are for? I mean, I I don't know if that's what lesser restoration is technically for, but I love it so much. And now if I'm if I'm the DM of your game, for me. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm sorry. So we're painting stones, but I saw that and I had to say something. Yeah. Yeah. Now I fully understand. Um, okay, so now we're going to jump over to the base. So I'm going to shift our flying boy that way, or gal, or whomever. Um, yeah. Dark flesh tone, which again is another one of those Vallejo colors that's floating around, but is in the D&D prismatic paint set. Uh, Lurking Writer wants to know, question, I don't have this mini. Do the wings make it mm -hmm. top-heavy, imbalanced, and thus why it needs a base? Um, yes, you definitely want to make sure it's attached to its base so that it's not flip flopping all over. Um, it does have a little bit of a balance point on its own, but it's a slightly easier to knock over when you just depend on this base. Um, so we are going to do some fun with the bigger base. Uh, we're also going to take a drop of black and mix it into the dark flesh tone just to make it sort of a darker brown. Okay. But one also dropped. This it might, it might be a little hard to see right now, but this dragon is intentionally posed flying. in a flying position. Yeah. So that's why you can't, even if you can put it down and it'll stay upright-ish, uh, it you won't can, look yeah. right. If you have it propped on the ground to look like it's you know walking, it looks like it's drunk because um, it lists to one significant side. It's also <laughs> not stable at all in that respect. So just yeah. an FYI for those of you wondering. And we've if had a couple of base. Yeah, we've had a couple of minis like that. The Hell yeah. Wasp. 
Oh, uh, yeah. It's the, the one that's immediately coming to mind. We also have the green dragon that we painted that's on a flying base. Yep, green dragon, same thing. Are there any dragons that are not on bases? <sighs> or do you have to get to, like adult or ancient where I know the bigger ones there's I mean obviously they're on bases for the sake of knowing what they take up space wise on a map um but like Tiamat's solid on her feet uh Shardalyn's solid on their feet Arviaturus is also solid on feet um I know see I have like the adult dragons downstairs the adult mm. dragons some of them are in flight one of them was it the black dragon I want to say it was the um adult black dragon that is on fours or at least on threes with the foot raised. I should check the silver that I have. Oh, God, that silver I think that that's we an one. adult. Yeah, that is yeah. an adult. Yeah. All right. I think All I have right. enough mixed up now. So I'm going to go in and definitely make sure you get into the nitty gritty. I'm trying to figure out the best place to put my light so I can still see, but it's not flaring out the camera with the white. Yeah. And this is going all over the base? All over the base. We're all about yes. the base. Excellent. I may need to add a little bit more water to this. This is a bit thick. Mm. Oh, answer that question. Hmm? Sorry, I'm just I'm double checking oh. uh, the questions document to make sure. Oh, smart. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm trying my best. I, I'm a little out of practice since it's been a couple of weeks, but you know. I made the mistake of it's been a few weeks for us streaming. I hit the OK for a freaking OBS update. It's one of those things I was like, that's not the button I wanted to click. But it's also like mm -hmm. it's been really wonky weather wise. You know, snow day is abundant this week. Day off for Martin Luther King. So, like, my brain's just like, I don't know what you want me to do anymore. I'm just tired. Can we hibernate? <laughs> yeah. Same for me. Like, we we came back from break, and I had mm -hmm. a couple of days of, of work that included uh, that fun day on Wednesday and where we, we announced Season 7, and we had the Rivals game, which mm -hmm. was super fun and a great game, but so long. Uh, was, and then yeah. that weekend i left to go down to atlanta to go do the finale of d4 and mm -hmm. i took off the monday tuesday wednesday because of a variety of reasons why uh it made sense to do that yeah um so last week i really only worked thursday and friday and then this week like you said we had the americans had a holiday because uh, right. it was not a holiday in canada no. so uh so this week has been a four day week, but there's been a lot of work actually still going on because other people have been in the office. So yeah, yeah, I've lost track of what day it is and what time it is. And hopefully next week with it finally being the first full, regular, nothing ridiculous happening week, yeah. I'll, I'll figure out who I am and where I'm supposed to be again. You know, when you're going through everything you've been doing in the beginning of the January, I'm really thinking why I am so tired because my January has been bonkers. Yeah, yeah, you've had a lot going on, Because I had too. the whole, like, being on call for jury duty. So there's the anxiety of, like, will I even be able to go to work tomorrow? So that threw off last week for me. Yeah. Um, but then I on top of that. Said, I don't know if you wanted to say about that. Oh. That's one of the reasons we didn't have a show right. the last couple of weeks. I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, because uh, jury duty in America, just, yep. you know. Yep. Yeah. They had me tap for that Friday through Friday. So I was like, well, that's going to change yeah. things. Mm -hmm. um, then there was the snowstorm and a window leaking. <laughs> then there was a cold snap and a pipe leaking. Mm -hmm. Then there was another. It was just there's a lot going on, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's one of the reasons yeah. why uh, it took a little. And this it wasn't did. the only show. Like we had kind of a rolling start to uh -huh. the year as far as streaming went for a lot of those same reasons for a lot of people. So it just yeah. it made sense to. Uh, get into the year in a way that made sense and not be as stressful. And so that's why I, I think this week is the first week we've had a completely normal Twitch schedule without any yeah. changes or cancellations. Um, Ta-da! Yay! I'm just trying to edge around this base. Or the... Yeah, the, the I'm plastic. a fan of this space it has some great grooves to the stonework and it's going to be so much fun when we start doing the kit bashing um, oh yeah 
because uh, no spoilers in this because you're gonna see it in the supplies list. You'll see that there are some aquarium plants that you'll need to buy for this kit bashing. And we can have some fun and actually stick plants into these grooves and they'll stay nicely. And it's just gonna look so cool and swampy. Um, so I'm really excited for it. Yeah. Like, I think I'm more excited about painting the base up and getting it kit bashed than the dragon. <laughs> I mean, you sent me those aquarium plants easily a year ago, if not oh, more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so well, I have a huge stash because I bought, like, sheets upon sheets of this stuff. Yeah. Um, it's great for terrain. It's great for minis. It's a whole bunch of stuff that I can put it to use for, so. so yeah, we've been excited about using those for a while and just waiting oh, yeah. for a good uh, a good time, and, and this is kind of the perfect time. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I think I got everywhere. I'm going to let it sit for a little bit and dry so that I can a little easier see if I missed anything. Oh, I'm still going. I'm, I'm almost there. I think. I'm almost there. Well, you've been... You've, you've been doing instructing. The instructing part. <laughs> Lurking writer, all your base are belong to brush. I mean, in this case, <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Um, there we go. Yeah, so the beginning of the year, I mean, bad things happened, but a lot of the stuff wasn't as bad as it could have been. And mm -hmm. a lot of it was like... I'm trying to think of how to... So, like, I went down to Atlanta that first weekend to go play at D4. Right. And I my flight out on the Saturday was the day after that plane had the issue and where the door just went in in flight um and yeah yeah and so they had to for obvious safety reasons ground oh, all yeah. of those type of planes which is the plane i was going to be on on saturday uh i was also flying alaskan because that's what you do when you're in seattle because it's the hub so yep. without getting so the tldr of saturday is um I managed to finally get to Atlanta, but it was a much, instead of it being a one plane, one shot, it was almost a three plane. And it ended up it being was two planes. It was, it was, it was a lot. It was a movie. It ended up being two planes and renting a car. Cause eventually I got to uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And because of the way the flights were not going to work out and what might have happened and me possibly needing to stay overnight, I took a look at what the, the drive was and I went, I'm just gonna rent a car and drive because it'll take less time for me to get there. So uh, so that was, on the one hand, was that good? No, but I got where I needed to go that day. And Thankfully. yeah, and I know a lot of people who were not able to because that whole weekend mm -hmm. was uh, and I got to yeah. play and then I got home safely. So like, the, the getting there was stressful right. and hard, but it, I, I have to remember it could have been a lot worse because right. like, you know, at that point, there's only so much customer service can do for you. You just got to oh, yeah. hope, you know, and they tried, they tried their best. Oh yeah. It's like a wing and a prayer factor. Seeker 30K, you got to make a lot of us cry, you mean. I would like to think that Orkira was not as, um, uh, didn't inspire quite as many tears as some of the other characters. Hi, Kitty. Yep, Rory's <laughs> back. Rory's here. Hi, Kitty. But um, it was the okay. finale of a five-year campaign, so. Yeah. All, All right, right so we're going to go back to the Dargan and there. the mouth, and we're going to mix a little bit of white in with that scarlet red and dry brush in the mouth to show off that tongue. Okay. Phrasing so that you never... <laughs> Welcome to mini painting. What, what this is what you do. Yep, yep. So. This is the off-white? Yes, sorry. The off-white. Do, do, do. Now, I still have some of my red left over, so I'm just going to add a dot of white next to it and mix it up to yep. a lighter shade of red. Probably like a... Um, mm, try to leave a good color to compare it to. I'm I'm getting something that's not quite a pink, but it's definitely Yeah, it's not a pink. It's um 
It's gums colored is really what it is. You know, not wrong. Kind of like a raspberry ice cream color. Okay. A raspberry that, yeah. yogurt. Yogurt. Yeah. Ice cream, I think I would think it, it's close, but yogurt is, yeah. I think, spot on. At least yeah. for what I got. Yeah. Young girly. What are we doing here? No, that's not your friend. I miss being on camera. She did. She absolutely yeah. did. No, don't take the dragon with you. <laughs> Navikad says, I, I find it kind of absurd you haven't haven't never used this code yet. Yeah, our, our Electrum chess code is Black Dragons. Well, It worked? Oh my god, I just noticed what the code was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Perfect. listen, we've never painted a Black Dragon. Fair. Uh, and everywhere else that we've talked about dragons has probably been like Tiamat or just dragons in general. Right. So, you know. Huh. I've been making codes long enough over these last three or so years in where it's always worth trying. <laughs> can you, okay, you're purring, you're cute, but can you sit? Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna focus it definitely on the tip of that tongue. Okay. And dry brush that tongue first. And again, don't worry about the teeth. The teeth will get taken care of. And then I'm gonna flip it upside down and just, not like anyone's gonna be staring into the mouth, but I'm gonna do the upper portion of the roof of the mouth with the same color and dry brush that. Okay. Just to give it some enhancement. I mean, and this is one of those things, will anyone ever be looking at it? Probably not except for me. Right. And I will see it. So right. exactly. totally worth it. Yeah. And the tongue in will make a difference by dry brushing it. <laughs> <laughs> that pause that pause i love it mm -hmm. i caught your look and it broke me <laughs> i'm telling you as a mini painter and a dm there are just sometimes you say things and it's like this is what you mean to say but then you're like that phrasing god dang mm -hmm. it <laughs> out of context mm -hmm. right <laughs> beg pardon <laughs> oh, wait what was that again Anyhow, <laughs> now we definitely want this to dry again because we've now put red and white together as a color and put it onto the tongue. And anything with red, again, likes to play yeah. more aggressively. So we want to be sure this is dry before we start painting around that mouth. Yeah. All right, so Darken's going to go over there. Now what we'll do is remove Rory's hair from my base. And we're going to go to Cobalt Scales and dry brush the base, provided it's dry with cobalt yes. scales and if you have a larger flat brush i would recommend using a larger flat brush i do and i even pulled it out because i went oh i'm, I'm gonna have to one. dry brush this dargan and i'm gonna need yeah. to do a lot of dirt brush and a nice big one this one i love this one it always feels so nice it's such a soft brush i like it what's it made out of is it anything? it's just synthetic it's synthetic it's the plaid um hobby brush and it okay. has an angle tip which i really like but it just, yeah. it's always like, it cleans beautifully and it's just so soft. It reminds me like of, um, like that soft patch behind a cat's ear. That's, that's, yeah. that's me. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. That yeah. totally makes sense. Okay. So going to go for cobalt scales, which this color is a nice brick red tone. So if you don't have cobalt scales, because this is one of those colors I said, you'll know when the name comes up that it's not from the D&D &D Prismatic Paints. Hi. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to aim for a red brick color if you don't have the Prismatic paint set. And we're not mixing any colors into this one. It's just straight up cobalt scales, which sounds like an adventure. Straight up cobalt scales. For level one to three adventures. Yeah. Pardon me, I'm gonna use a paintbrush to hold my hair back because it's starting to get in the way. No worries. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. Rex Verity says, I've learned to repeat NPC names while preparing just in case mm. and the lurking writer adds in uh, a wonderful quote from matt mercer which is learn from my mistakes fair listen we've all been there yeah it happens to all of us mm -hmm. all right so i'm going to take my nice wide brush i'm just going to start pulling it across the stonework and because we're doing this as a couple rounds it's going to be a subtle shift in color tone uh, but we're going to go back in and use an even lighter color and that's really going to pop the upper portions 
Okay. I was wondering because I was having that moment of like, am I actually getting no, a dry brush it's, going? It's a, here, I'm going to pull the light out. It's a very subtle color shift. But when it comes to stones, it's worth having those hint changes. Yeah. Because it'll make it look more stone-like in the long run. I mean, I have terrain tutorials where I think I've used like eight different paints on the same piece of what's going to become stone. Just to build up the layers. Mm-hmm. I just definitely had that moment where I'm like, ooh, did I actually dry brush or is this part still wet from the, yep. uh, the other brown? Definitely a fair pause. I'm actually working the brush so it pulls away from the center post. If you get paint on this, that's totally okay. There's a way to remove it easily, very easily. Mm. <clears throat> yep, we've had to do that before. Oh, I've done it so many times. Although this base, when I was working on it with the, the first color, what I definitely noticed was there's there's almost like a natural indent. It has a lip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it made it actually really easy yeah. to just edge around. A lot easier than other right. uh, other bases I've had to edge around for sure. Yeah. It helps for sure when it's like that. I mean, there are some bases where I've actually manipulated the post out of the base. However, I don't recommend doing that in general unless you really know how to work the mini base. Because uh, you run the risk of snapping it. Yeah. Um... But yeah, some of them are a little bit more tight in how close it gets. Others, like this one, you like Lauren was saying, there's a nice little lip around it. So that helps. I'm even going around and doing like another round of dry brushing where it's already dried up and you can see it's starting to shift it. Ta -da. Yeah, I had to do a lot of uh, manipulating it in the light to make sure. Yeah. I got all the spots. Got it, I got um, it. Let me see something oh there we go uh uh chip rj says i just ordered this mini so i can go back and watch this and the future episodes while i paint it oh excellent Yay. In, enjoy painting this is a lot I of fun depending that. on how quickly the mini comes and what your schedule yeah. is like it is very possible in where you might be able to catch up and join us especially for the last couple episodes exactly don't That'd rush don't rush but you know no depending on yeah, absolutely. No pressure. That is the joy of VODs. Mm -hmm. As everybody gets busier and and everything, being oh, yeah. able to have VODs are on all sorts of TTRPG stuff. A crazy little thing called life. Yeah. yeah. See, this is what I mean about this brush. I mean, I didn't even use a brush cleaner on it, and it's oh jeez, pretty damn clean. <laughs> what yeah. is it about this brush? I've had this brush for like three years now out of the package. It's just that good. It's a magic. This is this is like my magic brush. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to look for that because like I'm I'm happy with this brush, but my um my large dry brush right. has this like brown like that's not paint. That's just it's, yeah. how it comes, yep. which just happened to also be the color, the first color we put down on the base, which is why mm. the first couple times I went to go dry brush, I'm like, oh shit, oh no, mm -hmm. what did mm -hmm. I do wrong? No, yeah. oh no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. No, all right. Okay, next. so now it's actually okay that if this is still slightly damp because it'll be to our advantage, we're going to go in with myconid spore, which is again another one of those prismatic paint colors um but it is a lovely almost not quite toasted marshmallow because toasted marshmallow is warm uh it's like when you put too much milk in your hot chocolate ah okay, it's kind of yeah. like that kind of color i'd say yeah, i do I a swatch on my that. arm but it tends to blend in with my skin tone it's a little more gray than that like i, I see what you're talking about with it being there warmer than yeah, the toasted so marshmallow but definitely yeah it's not like a warm tone like 
I'm not kidding. This is like basically get a V colored paint. <laughs> Just right there, just you know, just, just a little bit. Just right there. Find the paint. <laughs> you got, you got a lot more pink going on than if your skin oh. was really that color. I'd be uh, canceling this stream and asking you to go see a doctor. Let's I'm put it pale. that way. Uh, let me tell you, makeup goes a long way for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna dry brush that on to the base as well. Um, go with a feather light touch on this one. You don't want it to be too heavy. You just want it to kind of catch those higher ridges is what we're doing. Oh yeah, and unlike the cobalt scales with this just This did, is gonna pop, yeah. This is gonna pop. But I like that. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll go this way where it's not quite as wet. Caleb Marin says the orange blob on the towel looks like it's a fish. Oh. Oh, kind of, oh, on yeah. Your, on your, oh, yeah. Kind of, yeah. We're, we're making goldfish. Oh. It's a uh, silgar. I was just thinking that because we had uh, Gina Darling on yesterday on Idle yeah. Insights. And so we talked, uh, well, the, Trevor and her talked about specifically, um, her enjoyment of B. Dave's version of the Xanathar and how it's become kind of her through line for all of her characters that they all want to steal Silgar for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. So that was definitely fun. It was that was fun during the uh, Idol Champions Presents stream when yeah. it was just like all of a sudden she's playing two characters, but both of them want Silgar. I mean, <laughs> fair. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. <laughs> with the three different colors on there it will get a wash so the reason why i wanted to do a more impactful color is because i knew once that wash goes on it's going to mute it down a little bit but it'll still give you stronger edges of the brushes or not the brushes of the stones details yeah so and that takes care of the base for now so the base is actually something we will probably put aside for hey. a little bit today what time is it uh, we're only 45 minutes in yeah. Um, so I definitely want this to dry because what we're going to do is um, we're going to do a wash before the end of the stream today. And that'll give the wash plenty of time to dry because I want to be sure the paint has fully cured before we start trying to glue anything into this base. Um, otherwise, it's going to be one of those things where... It's going to be a mess. It'll just yeah. be a mess. Even, yeah. even beyond the problems getting stuff to attach, it'll just... Yeah. Exactly. It'll it won't adhere properly. Um, I got distracted. Lurking writer wants to. No, I lurking writer wants to know if uh, we ever do a Silgar mini. If Gina will join us. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Is there even a mini for Silgar? Is it like? Does it come with the Xanathar? Aha! I made one. <laughs> oh, you made that. Made that. I okay. made it. Yeah. It's basically a jewelry collection of jewelry beads, and I painted it on. So. You just put the Xanathar on there and ta-da, I recreated the hey. book. Yeah. This was a fun uh, kit bash that I did a while, a while back. Yeah. So. But are yeah, there goldfish that... minis? Like, koi's? I think there's like koi minis out there. I don't think WizKids has them, but I know there's minis out there. Yeah. That are koi's. So. Yeah, I can't think of a fantasy of equivalent at this moment so, that's, so unless it a, was like a set that came with the xanathar yeah i'd be hard pushed to figure it out okay so now 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 what are we doing now, now we're gonna go to the dargan um hi dargan 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 like i said i'm flipping back and forth with my notes because when a mini gets to be this big typically i'll make the list in terms of step by step by step what we're gonna do but when a mini gets to be this size, I look at it per part and then write out mm. step by step per part. So I'm toggling between base, flip the page, go over to mouth, flip over, <laughs> go to something else. Um, so I think for this case, now we're going to go to the body and we're going to start painting with black. We are going to paint it black. Mm -hmm. Straight black. 
straight black. So we're going to, but All keep right. in mind, there are certain portions of the body you don't want to paint black. Like you don't want to get underneath the chin and the throat area here because that's going to be a separate color. As you can tell in the art, right? Finger work with me right there. See, yeah. that's not black underneath. We're going to do a different color there. So basically it's going to be the upper jaw gets the black and the lower jaw will also get the black which is kind of it's it's going to be a very thin line through here okay um but underneath okay. we're going to have that as the paler tone not panatone the paler tone uh and then the plates on the tummy and down the tail those are going to be kept as is uh we're going to take it through on the legs with black and then we also want to do on the wings where you see like these bony protrusions these are all going to be painted black but the webbing is not okay. and you have to do it on both sides so just heads up on that so yeah we're going to be painting black pretty much for the rest of this episode folks <laughs> i mean and we knew it was going to happen yeah it's it's kind of a given it's called the black dragon so yep it's a thing it's a thing that it do all right where do i want to <laughs> I I think I'm actually going to start at the head because that's more finicky and then I'll go sweeping out to the larger areas. Yeah, I think I'm going to join you in that. I grabbed, yeah. I grabbed my big brush, but I think starting a little smaller probably makes sense. And I'm going to thin this paint out a little bit uh, as well. Hey, make triple. Listen. Mm -hmm. Uh... I know you're having fun, but also if you did want to paint your black dragon fluorescent green, like that would actually be kind of cool. That's yeah. one of the fun things about homebrewing stuff for, especially if you've got a party of players who are experienced D and D players who, you know, we all try to not meta game, but when you see just a black dragon, yeah. you're going to kind of know a bunch of stuff. So suddenly if you're like, it's a fluorescent green dragon and everyone you goes, wait, what fun. Take your standard dragons and make them fun, okay? Yeah. You can tell that Hemingway has been loving up this guy because there's fur on it. But <laughs> this is another one of the young the young dragons just painted up to be, I think this is um, a gemstone dragon I was going for here. And then this was another one that, this was a bronze that I painted oh, to look yeah. like a uh, galaxy uh, petunia. So absolutely, take your dragons make them look however you want because quite frankly it's really cool results that you get in the long run absolutely so do now it. quick question because I'm, I'm having yep. a hard time the frill at the top of the head that kind of goes down the, the that back of the neck. we will do the bony protrusions will also get the black the, the, the black but the webbing is going to get the same color as the wings webbing all right that's so Looking at the the mini yeah. on the screen, I was kind of getting that impression. Yeah. So. Oh yes, uh, multiple people in chat are uh, ooing and eyeing over both of those dragons Thanks. that you just showed off. They are it's like very I hate pretty. Minis or something. <laughs> <laughs> now I love taking what should be a traditional mini and giving them a spin on color palette and interpretation. It is exciting for me to be able to do yeah. that. That's one of the neat things that, um, so in D4, one of the players was playing a Circle of the Stars Druid and uh, she would summon, there's a spell that Druids get. Uh, I think other classes have access to it, uh, but you summon a Draconic Spirit Mm -hmm. And that became something that she did on a regular enough basis that, like, she had a name for the dragon and everything. Oh, yeah. Um, and the way she described it because of what she was and what she did uh, actually looks a lot like that starry dragon that you just showed. That was the, the flower yeah. version. Yeah. Uh, but that kind of... The, the blues with the the stars and everything and it's just real cool and so every time that dragon showed up i got real happy yeah it's fun when you can do stuff like that now for the bony protrusions on the top of the head just paint that black because we'll go over and we will do some dry brushing to kind of highlight those out to a different color 
um, but it'll just be easier to cover them up now and then go back and kind of adjust the coloring. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I kind of started with the back of the neck first, and I figured I'd go kind of around and up from there, because there is a lot of detail There's on this head. There's a lot head. happening, yeah. Yeah, so basically for the top of the head, the only thing to try to actually avoid is the, the two big horns. Yep. Everything else is fair game. Open, yep. Open for painting. Yeah, Lurking Rider says, uh, the galactic one is a favorite. I'm a sucker for nebula slash cosmological color palettes. Me too. Yeah. And not just too. because I'm playing a uh, Circle of the Stars druid named, uh, who has a nickname of Neb. So, you know, you are, you are in good company. Paint them plaid so they can be ludicrous dragons. <laughs> the fastest oh dragons goodness. in Faerun. How fast mm -hmm. are they going? Ludicrous speed. <laughs> yeah, I love taking existing creatures and oh, absolutely. And uh, not only me for my players, especially since now my my podcast they've been playing for six six and a half years now so say, it's been a nice long haul hasn't it yeah so while at the beginning uh two of them had never played D, &D before now they're they had plenty of experience mm -hmm. so it's been fun to not only look for creatures and things that they haven't ex that they didn't experience in the first campaign but then i can start playing around with stuff and be like all right you see this but it looks like this and that kind of thing yeah and uh Deb does a lot of that in Children of Erte just because of it being a homebrew world of hers mm -hmm. and where creatures will show up and she'll describe them. And it's definitely one of those like, I I don't know what that is. That's right. And it's exciting. Like it's, it's fun. cool. It's cool as a player to not, you know, especially someone who's played for a while. It's cool to not know what something is. Oh, absolutely. 100% agree. And slightly terrifying, but mostly just fun. Yeah. Only terrifying when you're about to die. You know, every other time. Super fun. <laughs> then, I wouldn't then the song changes. This. Yeah. Then things get a little intense. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I'm still having fun, but now it's it's a, it's more stressful fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll be back to regular fun in just a second. Let me start healing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely glad I started with the head because it's got a lot more finicky details going on here. Um, Tim Thalas wants to know, would the intense vivid colors for dragons be somewhat muted for dragonborn characters? Oh, I mean, V can speak to this more on, as a mini painter in general, but I don't think so. Uh, I think, um, yeah, I think I'm dragonborn can be a multitude of colors and hues and shades and and vividness yeah honestly my, my response was why <laughs> why would you <laughs> mute it <laughs> well one Have of my favorite it. bits of lore and i think i think this is the, in fifth edition as well there's been so many changes that i've forgotten who which which does what um mm. but uh there is official lore that talks about how dragonborn not only can they be other colors besides the standard chromatic metallic and gem um right. not only do they not have to follow what their parents were um but you can actually end up with kind of in between colors rust being like one of the specific yeah. things that got called out they can be rust colored um which i actually found real cool and i always like that about dragonborn that like you don't have to just because you're say orkira and a gold dragonborn that doesn't mean you have to have the same frill and uh horns as a gold dragon it can be yeah any of the draconic features and that was also one of the reasons i was very happy with Baldur's gate uh Baldur's oh, yeah. gate 3 because you can do that you you can not only um 
customize the appearance of your dragonborn, but they don't have to be the same color as your breath weapon. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be like a specific shade. You can you can just have so much fun with them. I mean, if you're going to be a draconic creature in a in a fantasy setting, why yeah. not? Actually, I changed my mind. We're going to paint under the chin black. Okay. And the then whole, we'll, yeah. The whole under so the chin. So basically edge around where that bone plate meets underneath and then paint under the chin black. Oh. And do. Painter's prerogative. Yeah. Go for it. Oh, foil blaster. Um, mm. So V is the one in the. That's that's her hands and her mini, um, because the she she is the master and I am the apprentice. <laughs> so we are all watching the detail of her doing her yeah. painting. Uh, that's why every once in a while I just hold mine up. Uh, also, she's got the really nice detailed camera um, that can show off all that detail. Yeah. Mine, I can only get so close before it gets a little blurry. So. Yep. So that is who it's you are me. seeing up close. Yeah. And so, yes, both of us are painting, but she's the one oh, you're yeah. getting the close up of. Um, but Tribble says, I got day. to paint a few dragons in the late 80s as I was pretty much just down the road from Gren. Grenadier Models UK Manufacturing. Ooh, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I, uh, may I assume that you are familiar with them? Yeah, really neat looking old school stuff. Well, when they were first coming out, yeah. That's cool. I am not a Dark Lord. Boronika is the Dark Lord. Make that one clear. <laughs> I am not a Dark Lord. I don't want that. Get Nope. I couldn't be a dark. I could. I can play one on TV, but I couldn't actually be one. <laughs> <laughs> I could still play on TV. You can play one in, in certain TTRPG settings, right? But not. But not. No. Double. Sorry, I got distracted. Just double checking the head one more time as I'm moving forward. Okay, so basically at this point, it's just the, that where the scales start under the yeah between yeah. the chin and the neck and then just try to avoid the teeth and the horns yep exactly okay okay cool 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 Sorry, excuse me as i'm back and forth looking looking at chat and looking at other things okay head let's yeah, do no, this i definitely am not a dark lord or a dark lady Nope, oh, you just play one on TV. Just play one on TV. That is my character, Voronika. Who, yes, she might look like me, which, by the way, I had no idea that was going to be the case when they did the art. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that was what was happening. I saw the poster. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, what did you use as a model for I'm this? I'm like, I know I sent you pictures of what the cosplay was going to look like. I didn't think you were going to make her look like me. <laughs> Well, now, in fairness to our art artists, first off, they're yeah. awesome, but second Oh, off, no, I mean, like, the Black Dice Society official art. Because our well, artists and, got oh, from that, okay. yeah. When the official well, art for the Black Dice Society came, I was like, hold up. <laughs> that's funny, because that's exactly what I was going to say. I thought you were talking about the Idol Champions No, artists, no, no, no. Like, but the official art, like, that's no, it was, you. It was the official art. Oh, no, by the time by the time I worked with our artists, it's like, yeah, I know she looks like me. So if you ever need a reference, just, you know. I'll jump in a call and I'll make the facial expression. He says, ah. <laughs> yep, I'll just be there. Yeah. Whereas it wasn't until very, very, very recently that mm. I ever had to worry about Orkira looking like me. <laughs> right? <laughs> that was never, ever a question. Which I, is, for me, that's Surprise. half the fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait, you want, wait. We're doing what, what now? <laughs> and you want it to. Okay, all right, let's do this. I mean, those have been fun design calls, just seeing people's delight and like, oh, wait, my character's actually going to kind of look like me. Yeah. 
when that set came out that included um I need to go out from the camera, sorry. No, no, that's okay. Uh that included um uh Farida and Freely and Orkira all in one, but as their mm -hmm. different counterparts that all looked like us. Yeah. <laughs> that just tickles me every time I see it. Yeah, that was a fun one. Right now, my, my brain is not speaking anymore on it just because with all the different design calls I've done, like, I'm being quiet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Our, our, uh, the folks in chat are used to us yeah. being like, we're just not going to talk about something partially because of NDAs and partially because I can't remember what's out just yet. Yeah, that's oh. just it. My brain's like, I forget what is officially out right now. Yeah. Also, <laughs> hi, Brian Corhuto. Is Hello, to Brian. See you. Uh, and then, uh, do, do, do. <laughs> the chat is now talking about you being the Galadriel of mini painting. Instead of having a dark lord, you'd have a dark I will queen. accept that. I will accept Galadriel. Not as a dark queen <laughs> form. Yep. I mean, she's, she's pretty awesome. She is. There, there's uh, unfortunately not a lot of femme presenting folks in Lord of the Rings to be compared to. However, if you're gonna be, uh, yeah, one. Gladrail's pretty darn badass. Well, I'll take that one. Yeah. She packs a punch. So to I speak. only saw bits and pieces of the. Uh, Lord of the Rings miniseries that I know she was... Oh, it was good. I mean, I thought it was good. I appreciated it. Well, and that's... That's all that matters, that you had fun. I yeah. know Luke was uh, loving it. I just... I have a hard time getting into the prequel-type shows. Mm, fair. Um, especially if they're going to include characters that are in those other you know, in, in the future. Like, right. I really enjoyed Rogue One because even though you know in the end kind of what's going to happen, mm -hmm. these are new characters, and so you you don't know what's going to happen specifically to with them. these characters. Yeah. yeah. And so that was... That makes sense. That was a lot of fun. Oh, well, I guess that tooth is going to be a little black for now. That's fine. Not for now. That's fine. That's and this is, this is the point where I'm like, why did I think we might need four weeks? I'm like, this is why I was thinking we might need four episodes for this one. <laughs> like, because, yes, we're painting it all black, but it's going to take a little while. Yeah. It's going to be a minute. Well, I enjoy that we were very... Um, we don't try to rush these. We don't try right. to go fast. Like, there's no... Right. There's no deadlines. Mm -mm. We're just having fun painting. Yeah. Now I am cheating these, um, I'm going to call them spikes, these spikes a little bit and letting the black bleed over slightly into the webbing because what's going to happen is when we go in with the webbing color, it'll make for a tighter connection line and you won't be dealing with any white peeking through of the primer. Ah, good to know because I'm about yeah. to get to that spot myself. Yeah. That's the same reason why I'm like, I'm just going to paint all of these bony protrusions black because it'll be easier to go back in with a dry brush and use the lighter taupe color to bring those back out. But then you're not gonna have like weird little white dots in the skull cap area. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. I'm hungry. If you hear my stomach like growling, that's why. <laughs> I did not hear anything. That's starting to growl. Is that time? Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, getting into the dinner time hours. <laughs> Ninth paw pawn is continuing the dentist discussion with black dragon Seriously. with a black tooth. It's so hard to find a decent dentist in the realms that works on dragons. Funny. Too I mean, funny. It's, yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta negotiate. That's hazard pay right there. Because you never know when the dragon's just gonna be like, ow, that hurt, mon. Um, Chomp. I know. <laughs> Ompa chomper. It still hurts, but at least now I'm not hungry. Exactly. 
least I'm not hangry. All right, I think, no, 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 spoke too soon. There's a little dot <laughs> I forgot. No, no, no. This is also why I started with the head because it has so many nooks and crannies. Yeah, absolutely. Just be easier to get it nicely coated and then go back to it. So if I need to do more of it next week, cool. We're good. Yeah. Like this, oh, with this one, apparently. This being just black and not a mix of something. Mm -hmm. That's just it. So I'm rather excited. I opened up many commissions again. And I've been chatting with a couple people. Oh. And the one I'm super excited. Hopefully we can have this move forward because the concept is a lot of fun. So Oh, nice. Yeah. Once once I know it's confirmed, I will chat about it uh with the uh permission of the person. Yeah. Um, but it was it's been fun getting back into the hey, I've had this on my mind. Is this something you could work on with me? And I'm like, Oh, I think I can. I really think I can. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah, yeah. That's always the most fun when you can get a commission that isn't just all right. I'm going to make somebody happy by painting this mini, or uh, I've, I've watched this happen with Luke quite a bit, or drawing this thing. Right. Um, but then also just oh, this sounds real cool, yeah. and I'm excited to actually do it, and like exactly. that's that's a win-win. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those things. I'm like. If I, I have to go scrounging through my minis and make sure I can make it happen, um, or see if I can order some to fit the bill. But if I can do that and find what I need, I think it's going to be a really fun commission. Yay! Well, I'm excited to hear about it when you can talk about it. Yes, thank you. Not not quite an NDA, but you know. Uh, not an NDA, it's just being respectful because I don't want to reveal anything inadvertently, especially um, since it is campaign-centered. Yeah. Um... Nope, that like, totally makes sense. Yeah, like if they say, oh, you know, I've commissioned V to paint minis for me, you'll see them later in the campaign, and then here's V talking about the commission paintings. <laughs> it's like... And now you can never watch her on any stream yep. ever again. It's like, there goes the surprise. I don't want to do that to the person. Yeah. Oh, this has... Ah. All right, switching brushes. <laughs> this one has too many little bits of brush sticking out. Mm -hmm. Will you be my friend? He might be my friend. Let's see. Everything okay? No, I'm just I'm having to catch up on chat. Oh, got um it. Yeah, uh, so I'm not going to say this out loud just in case, but V, you might want to look at what uh, Chip JR put into chat. Uh, because I have zero idea of who, what, where, when, why. Oh, hi, I'm Chip. Sure. Yeah. See? Okay. That's why I said I don't go into details because I never know who's watching. <laughs> hi, Chip. Yeah, I'm hoping to get I... back to you um, later this evening. I have to dig through like seven boxes of unpainted minis <laughs> to find what oh, I need. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I was, just, I was reading that comment and I'm like, okay, this reads like this yeah. is the person, but it I don't want to assume is. anything. Okay, cool. Nope. cool. Cool, 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 cool. Confirmed. Okay, so yeah, then if, if that's the case, Chip, I'll definitely share it with chat what we're plotting uh, once you and I have confirmed the details, because I think it'd be so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to hear. Yeah. Oh god, these spikes. There's so many corners in these spikes. I, you know, to clarify, just, I don't want to, this is a previous paper cut. The dragon did not do that to me, if you notice the <laughs> cut on my thumb. <laughs> I mean, th there are some, it's not the spikes, actually, or the horns or any of that, mm. but I feel like the wings, the yeah. edge of the wing. Fine. That could do a paper cut. That could do a that an could outgee, do a cut. So. Yeah, I mean Tiamat has literally attacked me. She's left damage on me before. The Remoraz, that the Remoraz was close sure. to drawing blood because of how pointy yeah. those are. Um, there have been some minis who have caused physical damage just because of their sculpts. 
Yeah. They're not bad. They're just molded that way. <laughs> uh, that's how you know that it's an accurate sculpt. Is It's as mm -hmm. dangerous as the real thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to get this angled so you can see what I'm doing on camera because the angle I need to get, the wing's in the way. I'm winging it! Yeah, so I should probably mention, um, because we've had this with a couple different minis in the past, I did have to do the trick on this dragon where uh, oh, yeah. you, stick, you stick part of the mini into hot water and then cold water because something has shifted in the packaging. And yeah. so when I pulled this, this Dargan out, both these wings were basically straight upright together. And I'm looking at this going, I'm, no, no, this is gonna be impossible yeah. to paint. This can't be the way this is gonna work. So I did have to do a little bit of remolding. It, it, it was actually fairly easy. I know you've talked about this oh, before, yeah. but definitely it, it was one of those in where I put it into the hot water and very quickly the wings goes, just went, oh. It relaxes. It's like, yep. yes, I have my sauna. <laughs> yep. I just cracks me up. up. The, the muscle memory of plastic is amazing sometimes at how quickly the shapes will snap right back to where they're supposed to be. And you're like, oh, so you didn't know what you're supposed to do. You just decided to get a little lazy in shipment. Got it. <laughs> yep. Yep. They just ended up in the packages for too yep. long. Yep. Uh, Foil Blaster asks, uh, this is my first time seeing someone paint D&D &D minis. Well, welcome. Glad Hi. you could join us. Um, do y'all prime these or are they straight out of the box beyond fixing Fantastic the mold? Fantastic question. Invention? Yeah, absolutely. So we are using the uh, WizKids minis that yep, do the come Kids, prime. Yep, the WizKids D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures come primed ahead of time. Uh, yeah. The prime itself is a very light gray, almost white color. Um, and it's one of those things where, uh, you know, you can grab and go, how did I get black on there? You can grab and go quite easily. Not a problem with these. However, there are other miniatures from WizKids, specifically their frameworks, uh, where you will have to prime them afterwards because those are you know, sprue based minis that you have to assemble together and then go into prime, uh, your miniatures. I want to make sure that's mentioned because I don't want people to think, oh, WizKids, you don't have to prime. Eh, yeah. Certain lines you will. Um, so if it's the Knowles or Marvelous Miniatures, you're good to go right out of the box, quite literally. Um, but there are other minis out there in the D&D world where you will want to prime them first before you go into painting them. Um, it just depends on who the maker is and who you're working with. Some come primed ahead of time. Like, there are even some 3D miniature printers out there who will print the minis and then prime them for you before shipping. Oh, so it's that's just, nice. just being aware of who you're purchasing from and what they uh, do in their... Uh, customer service, I guess. Yeah. And for the most part, the at least the, the ones that I've purchased, um, it's pretty clear. They're very clear about how, yeah. oh, yes, this is primed, this is not primed. Yeah. Um, also, we've done kit bashing before and where we've taken from a couple different minis and then we've added on things and then we've had to prime that stuff as well. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, this, this Dargan comes completely primed and since we're not doing any anything uh the kit bashing we're doing is going to be on the base the base yeah and so we don't have to worry too much about yeah. the uh the prime but yeah that's yeah. an excellent question because uh yeah if you if you get a mini that is not primed you need to prime it first yes absolutely otherwise the paint could risk flaking um yeah, and the kit bash we're doing with the base, we're not doing a disassemble style kit bash. We're doing an enhancement, which means we're adding things to it. So we don't have to worry about repriming the base itself. Because yeah, I'm assuming, and this is an assumption on my part, that we mm. are not painting over the, um, the foliage. No, we're not. Well, one moment, please. I've done it in the past. Several... Let me just double check. You can have uh, as many moments as you like. That. That is up to you. I've made a note. Like, if you want to change color, you can dry brush plants. Um, oh, okay. That is a player's choice or painter's choice, I should say. Now, because those are plastic, mm -hmm. would if. 
if I decided to dry brush it, just dry brush. No, uh, you don't. It need sounds to like prime I them. wouldn't have to prime, but if we wanted no. to paint over them, you would have to. If you're going to paint over them, you would probably want to prime them first to make sure it actually holds too. Actually, you'd want to wash them first to make sure the paint holds too. But with dry brushing, because it's such a light coat, what I have personally found is you can do the dry brushing and then just make sure you um, spray the Mod Podge Ultra. And that's enough to kind of keep everything in its place afterwards. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Because yeah, priming is not necessarily hard, but you definitely want to, no. if you are going to do it, you want to give it plenty of time to dry. Exactly. Exactly. Like, say if you found those aquarium plants, but not in the color you wanted, because sometimes those aquarium plants, they can come in like neon bright colors. You could yeah. feasibly take those plants. Um, in this case, I would recommend an aerosol primer from the hardware store. Make sure it's for plastics. Um, mm. Spray it black and then go back in and paint it the colors that you want or spray it gray if you want to do lighter greens. Um, so there are ways of changing the colors of those. It's just being aware of how and what you want to do. But the vast majority of the time, at least for the purposes of the show, yeah. we are going to be painting minis that are already primed from the Nolzer's marvelous miniature line. Yes. Um, which is good because priming is also one of those things that, that like, especially the spray can, I can't do that in this yeah. room, That's especially in the winter when I can't open the yeah. window. So, <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, we've had people also asking about airbrushing in the past, and that's one of the other reasons that... Uh, oh, could not do airbrushing for this show. There's no way. <laughs> yeah, we do not have the setups for those. No. I'm sure there are plenty of folks who do, but not us. If you want a strong airbrush mini painter, Angel um, Herald is on YouTube. Beautiful work. Uh, could you spell that just so we make sure we find the right person? I cannot spell it off the top of my head without looking at the name. Um, okay. Traditional we'll find the name and get back to everybody. Is. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. He does a lot of great work and a mix of things from traditional D&D minis to uh, Warhammer to, you know, other really cool sculpts, so... Yeah, there's a lot of people doing uh, Warhammer minis out there because oh, there's yeah. a lot of Warhammer minis. There is that. <laughs> ah. See, I've played it. I don't think it's like I've, I've played it to learn what it's about. Thank you, um, Thalo. That's exactly it. Oh, there we go. Yep. I saw that just after you said thank you. Excellent. Yep. Thank you. Um, like I've played it in the past. It was cool. Mm -hmm. Would I want to play it again? Not really. wasn't my wasn't my thing. Like I just yeah. couldn't get into it. It's just not my style of gaming. Um, I can see why people are so into it though, and I think it's great. But boy, howdy, those minis are cool. I like the minis. I would paint yeah. the minis. Well, and I think I've said this before. One of the um, the very first mini I ever painted was for my fourth edition cleric that I played at the mm -hmm. at the store back when uh, back when that poor store was still around. Oh, I, I missed that store. Uh, but they had a painting station, so if you bought the mini there, you could just sit and paint and enjoy. And the the folks would come around and give you advice and pointers. Um, and the mini I ended up picking up that worked best for my cleric was a Warhammer mini. Mm -hmm. It just happened to be the the cleric I wanted with the, the big giant hammer and the book and everything. And I mean, doesn't matter yeah. that, you know, all right, this is usually in a whole army full of other things for uh, for Warhammer. I'm just going to paint this one and I'm going to be happy. Yeah, but that's just it. So many fantasy miniatures get pulled from one game to another for use in another, just because like they're cool looking and they're multifunctional. And yeah, it may not be exactly for this game, but you can still use them for this game. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, Lurking writer Johnny Chiodini also does a lot of great painting. Oh, they're they're so much fun to watch. Um, and then uh, there's there's 
there's a few many there's a few many painters out there that are fantastic and wonderful and lovely. I yeah, go enjoy watching yeah. a, a nice selection of mini painters. Yes. I know uh, Jasmine Bueller. Uh, Jasmine does yeah. does some, a, yep. a fair amount of mini painting. On Tanya DePass does. Um, yeah. Tanya will do mini painting. Uh, Johnny Stanton does mini painting. Yeah. Uh, rah, 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 our friend Zero, also mini painter. Uh, Mage Brush out there. Peach Witch. I'm going off of screen names because I'm blanking on names and sometimes I'm not sure if I should be sharing the name either if I don't oh, them as, no. don't know them as personally so I'm sw switching to screen names um, Chris Gorka a fantastic mini painter especially for like Marvel and DC stuff uh, wonderful work uh, there's, there's just so many people out there yeah yeah which is great because there's so many styles and there's so and many that's just techniques it. yeah yeah, tap into tap into watching other mini painting shows because so many people come with their own approach and techniques it's it's helpful. It's good to know different ways of painting the same mini or doing similar things with a different angle, quite literally. Speaking of different angles, I, I was just to, like, and now I'm black. trying to find a better angle. Speaking of angles. Yep, and I, I needed to put down more black. Mm hmm. This is why I figured let's focus on getting the black on because. You know, if we don't finish today, that's golden. We're fine. We can just pull out more black next Friday. Exactly. Yeah. Hi, baby girl. I hear you behind me. Yeah, I hadn't watched Johnny paint until uh, they came on Idol Champions Presents and we brought mm -hmm. uh, their character Russ into the game. Yeah. Um, and I, because I'd only ever seen them on ox ventures ox ventures um yeah. so yeah it was fun to go check out some of their other streams and be like "Ooh, okay that's yep. cool mark humes also paints minis yep <sighs> Hold on. i know mark Mir does a ton of mini painting but i i don't think he actually streams it like he mark, doesn't stream on his own channel he, painting yeah he does just... a combo like he paints for himself he also he's fantastic with hiring other mini painters to do a lot of his uh minis as well so yeah well he does a lot of those he has, uh, he's a D &D in a castle so having those uh those real nice painted minis mm-hmm I have some friends who, uh, that was last year, I think? They did, I had two friends who did D&D &D Castle uh, last year and had him as their DM and were just uh, oh <laughs> floored and amazed by, you, you know, like, it's, it's, it's one of those things where we're like, oh, everybody knows that Mark is awesome and everybody knows that, you know, he's a great DM and everybody knows. But then you oh. get there and you get a chance to actually play and see how much, you know, how fantastic he is as a DM and then all the, the terrain and the minis that he's brought and created yeah. and commissioned and everything. And it was, uh, hearing the stories was just lots of fun. Yeah, I mean, gushing about Lisa things. Teague, she, she does the same thing. Yeah. And she paints minis too. All right. Are we, are we playing you, baby? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, you're playing you, baby. All right. Thank you, Miss Thing. It's cat break time. No, no, we don't sit on the keyboard. We don't sit on the keyboard. <laughs> I just said we don't sit on the keyboard. <laughs> it's not a challenge. <laughs> Uh, no, did you not? Did you not hear the negative part of that? The mm -hmm. no, the nope, nope, nope. She's like, oh, the keyboard. I sit. No. <laughs> Foil Blaster so says, as a longtime Warhammer painter that is now a dad, the reason I like the idea of pre pre primed is that I could just buy a mini and start painting instead oh, of yeah. cutting, gluing, priming. Ain't nobody got time for that, right? Truth. Like, if if that's uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with getting a pre-primed primed mini. Um, and yeah, being able to just dive on in. I mean, heck, for that matter, jump in and grab a paint kit where the mini and the paints are all thrown together. Talk about easy. Yeah. Just off and running with it. 
Why do these shoulders have to be so bumpy? Uh, it doesn't get much better when you get to the uh, extensions in the wings. <laughs> yeah, that's going to no. be next once I got this yeah. other front leg This, this is going to be four episodes. <laughs> and that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the time and I'm like, I might get done with all the black. Oh, oh no, go, no, baby. no, no. I am not <laughs> expecting to finish the black today. Well, and by finish the black, I mean the the black, this part of the oh, black, not even part of anything the black, yeah. else. Yeah, just this this one layer that we're doing, not even anything else. And I'm like, I, I might, maybe, we'll see. Maybe, could be, possibly. Yeah. Oof. We definitely just want to leave some uh, space at the end so that I can go back after everything has dried a little bit to see, okay, did I actually miss a spot? Or is that just the shine of the paint? Which is a thing. I mean, that, honestly, you could let it dry until next week and go back and we can do a spot check first thing. Yeah. That is probably a good idea. Yeah. It's honestly something we'll probably want to do a couple times just because of the fact we'll still be painting with black next week. Spot check. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to avoid doing too much of the spot check as I'm like going too far back. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to get too distracted by, all right, I'm on the front, one of the front right. legs. And then I happen to notice something on the head and it's like, okay, and then is that straight a, spot? To a different spot? That... Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, I'm never going to get at least a coat down. I just, I just have to, just gotta go for it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to do is compartmentalize. I'm like, okay, so I just got, the head done now I'll work on the neck okay got the neck done now I'll do the shoulders got the shoulders done now I'll do a wing yeah just to kind of keep myself honest and not go too far because it's tempting trust me mm -hmm. it is very tempting <laughs> and especially since some of these are way easier to, to paint than others no. like like these front legs have so much it's awesome all the oh, yeah. detail in the nooks and but crannies and the texture. little thing, but, but yeah, you gotta do a lot of poking, and but you can want to yep. make sure that you're not getting too much paint in there, because then you're just getting rid of all the fun texture. Yep. So, exactly. Poke, 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 poke. Yes, you're stinking adorable, but no, not right now. Ay. <laughs> they had a couple she's of cute. weeks. Oh, yeah. They had a couple weeks in where no show. Mm -hmm. And now the show is back and they're like, okay, time for me to be on camera again. Well, that's, yeah, Rory is definitely like, showtime! Uh -huh. Who's using a leaf blower? It's snowing. M maybe it's a. Maybe they're using small it to blow the blower? snow? Maybe. No, that's, that's a leaf blower. I mean, I guess if you've got powdery snow. The urge to get up and look out the window is strong right now. I've definitely seen stranger ways of dealing with the snow as as someone who grew up in Buffalo and lived in places that are not used to getting snow. Right. I've I've seen all kinds of creative ways, uh, especially when it comes to cleaning off cars, because. Oh boy, you the know, car sagas. Yeah. And because it makes sense, like nobody in Seattle is really going to have the hardcore ice scrapers that you need on yeah. the the once a year in where all of a sudden your car is covered in ice. And the uh, creative uses of sharp objects <laughs> is definitely fun. No. Uh, there was a storm that happened, oh, no. man, it was many, many, many years ago. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, long before I started working. Uh, even for D&D uh, uh, Beyond, like mm -hmm. years ago, and I was in a, a different apartment complex, we had a, a pretty nasty storm come through, like power outages and a good foot of snow and real, real cold. And I have all of my stuff from living in Buffalo still in my car. I, you know, my ice scraper that I have had for decades. Oh, God, you know, yeah. when you When you buy one, if you buy the- You keep you, it. You, yeah, and they, they tend to last forever. 
so there was a point in where I was just wandering around, like, it's like, okay, I can't go anywhere, but these are people who are trying to dig out their cars and they're trying to do it with like a spoon or, you know, just whatever they could chip away at. And I just come over and I'm like, let me help. Let me, yeah. let me, let me just, this is going to be my workout for the day. Let me help you clear off your car with a tool that's not going to take three hours. Right? Oh God. I mean, my youngest thought I was a little bit, um, unique when I was showing them how to remove the snow from the front steps because yeah. the front steps are brick. Oh. I'm like, in this case, you use a broom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it yeah, gets into the careful. grooves and it, it gets everything out easily and you're not chipping the brick away or breaking the uh, blade of the snow shovel. Yeah, it's it's sadly very easy to chip brick, oh, especially God. if you're trying to yeah. get ice off, yep. of, off of it. They're like, but we have shovels. I'm like, I know we have shovels, but with brick staircases, you use brooms. Yep. It'll work. Trust me, it works. Mm. No, that's a leaf blower. There's two of them now. Did the lawn guys come? Why would the lawn guys be? Now I'm really confused. I There's mean, no you... lawn. <laughs> <laughs> They just want to see. Oh, okay. Ninth pawn suggests maybe to clear the snow on top of the vehicle. Yeah, depending on possibly. how much snow do you have. That's that's yeah. That's uh, McTribble suggests flamethrowers, which I mean would work, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I also don't know that many people who have a flamethrower, considering uh, considering how dangerous they are. Although there was that time for a brief period of time in where someone was just selling them because I remember suddenly a oh bunch of people God. having yeah but yeah I probably would avoid a flamethrower but yeah on, on top of the car because that is that is one of the other weird things that people don't think about is if mm -hmm. it snows a lot and then you you know you do a good job of cleaning off the windows and you get the door and you get everything but you've got a good couple inches on the top of your car right. now all of that is just spraying out into wherever you're driving to oh, so you the comments. <laughs> yeah yeah you could also just end up with a whole chunk of it just going ka chunk mm -hmm. you know onto a road that you probably don't want to do that on so oh i've seen it happen live Mm-hmm. all right i've made it to a back leg but I, I haven't even i haven't even started the wings yet though so i don't know I don't know how much farther I will get, but I've I've kind of committed to finishing the legs at least. I mean, you've picked your section, you're going for it. I, do it yeah. up. Do it up. Uh. Yeah, McTribble says, so many people clear just a circle of ice on their windscreens right? and same on side windows. Yeah. I don't, oh, I don't God. get it. I mean, I know folks are sometimes in a hurry and things, but like, you, you gotta be able to see. Yeah, absolutely. I need to rinse my brush a little bit. <laughs> but I've also been looking where this entire cold snow snap that we've had here in the greater Seattle area, uh, I haven't needed to go anywhere or be in a car. So That's that nice. has been, yeah, part of that was just me quarantining after coming back from Atlanta. And part of that was just like, I don't got to go anywhere. I don't want to go out in that. I'm staying put. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get bundled up and have to go out in that. I mean, while the other morning I was uh, showing the kids like, this is what you do with your car in this kind of condition with this type of road not being properly plowed. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yep. Yep. I remember getting that talk from my dad. Mm -hmm. Well, because I also didn't want them nervous. It's like, why is mom suddenly doing different things with her car? That's not what she normally does when she's driving. Why is this happening now? Yeah. And having them get scared. It's like, no, this is just, it's what you do in snowy conditions that helps the car. And make sure that you're not, you know, going inadvertently too fast, et cetera, et cetera. So. There are a couple things. I mean... There's a couple of things that I'm pretty sure I've forgotten how specifically to do, but mm. they are hardcore things like putting chains on your tires 
that around here, oh, uh, first yeah. off, I have a Fiat, which does not have enough clearance to have chains on the, the nope. wheels anyway. But even if it did, like right. if the weather around here is so bad that I would even consider chains on my tires, I should go be on the road <laughs> because Seattle can't deal with that kind of yeah. snow. Yeah. So no, it, it, honestly, it was like my first car. We were talking about this before uh, in a meeting. My first car, my father used to have to throw two bags, 50 pound bags of sand in the trunk just yep. to give the vehicle a little bit more oomph in the back. Yeah. Because it was so light. Um, and it's not until I got my most recent vehicle. I'm like, actually, I don't I don't mind it. It's not that bad, but it's also a four wheel drive car. So there you go. Yeah. Four wheel drive helps. It makes ton. a huge difference. The uh, when I was growing up, the car that I had was a Geo Tracker, which Ooh. was an adorable little Jeep. Cute, uh, yes. Not not the heaviest thing, it was a very, very light Jeep, but it had four wheel drive. Um, yeah. And specifically, it had the type of four wheel drive in where you had to go lock the the wheels yeah. that were not usually. That's how you put it into four wheel drive. So I had a um, uh uh, pliers. There we go. Words. I suddenly couldn't think of the word pliers. I had a big chunky pair of pliers in my glove compartment at mm -hmm. all times so that if I ever needed to put the car into four wheel drive, you could. Yeah. I could. Because if, if the weather is that wonky, then probably those tires are covered in snow and ice and it could, it mm -hmm. could be a jam. And I remember yeah. when I moved to Florida, I was in Florida for two years uh, with that car that had no air conditioning. It was a time. Oh, it was Lord. a time of my life. Yeah. Um, but I remember a friend of mine getting into the car, um, and I don't remember what they were actually grabbing in the glove compartment, but they were like, oh, do, do you have a, a this? Yeah, it's in the glove compartment. Just go ahead and open it up. And the next thing I know, they've pulled out this pair of pliers and they're like, what the hell Why? do you have this in the car for? <laughs> It's like, but wait, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason, but yeah. I, I could see why you would not know. Like, yeah. Yeah, and, and to be clear, chat, four-wheel drive, I'm very much aware that is not something that is a, it's a cure-all. It nah. helps with driving in snow, but you still better be responsible and careful and pay attention to what you're doing as the driver. It is yep. not the cure-all. It is an assistive it, feature. Yep. It also uh, doesn't do anything on ice. No. God, no. And there are people out there who do think that, and then they're like the ones who do like freaking ice cadets type of things. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the other reasons that like, okay, I have all of this experience driving in snow, but the vast mm -hmm. majority of it is in a place where... Uh, people don't. Well, not only uh, are there sand and salt and plows, but more importantly, Buffalo isn't really on a hill. There's not a lot of yeah. big hills. We're in Seattle. We're on the side of a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> so it is very easy to end up on a street and where you're like this or, mm -hmm. you know, the, the mm -hmm. angle is severe. And once again, if there's uh, ice there, guess what? Yep. <laughs> Like there are yeah, roads they're... I refuse to go on right now where I am because I'm I'm in mountain area. Yeah. So. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. Uh, the apartment that Luke and I are in is literally on. I think we're technically a mountain, but uh, it's it's you have to go up quite a right. bit in order right. to get there's there's no way around it, and so mm. there's been some times in the past where it's like we can't leave. Why? Because yeah. we'll, we'll never Can't be able back. to get back home. Nope. Can't get We're back. coming it's down no. and not going back up. That's a no. <laughs> That's a no. Oh. Yeah. Snow driving is fun. It's been a hot minute. Yeah, Moses Karata says, for how cold it got in Seattle, I wish we had snow to make it worth it. I mean, yeah. I I kind of get that. At least at least pretty snow. We, what we basically got was uh, freezing rain. Lots yeah, and lots of really worst. disgusting freezing rain. Yeah. 
I actually get more concerned when there's like a freezing rain advisory than when there's a snow advisory. Oh yeah. Yeah, we've got um, the apartment complex here has salt that they'll put down whenever it gets pretty cold. But, you know, there's only so much that they can do. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, when when it was like a week, it was a good week (sighs) of, oh, I don't want to I don't want to go anywhere. It's disgusting and dangerous and icky and and also just real darn cold, like. Yeah. Luke is from Canada, and like I've said, I'm from Buffalo, so we both have at least leftover clothing that can stand, that can help us stand the Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sub-zero temperatures. But even then, like, nah. Just because you can doesn't mean you wanna. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. If I don't have to, I might as well stay off the roads, make it safer for everybody. Yep. I'm all about the hunkering. If you can hunker and stay and cozy up and hibernate in your little house or home or wherever you are, perfect. Yep. Well, my next orchestral gig is until February, so hopefully by then we won't have to worry about this anymore. Because uh, that's that's a that's a totally different story when it comes to uh, requirements. How did I miss that whole claw? How did I miss that entire claw? Hi, Aurora. Stay there. No, no, no. I'm not done yet. Made the mistake of turning around to look at brushes and she's like, oh, you're done. No, I am not. McTribbles says, our outgoing road is steep enough that if there's a couple of inches of snow, we're all stuck on the road. Yeah. Yeesh, yeah. Well, and that's usually the problem in Buffalo when you hear about uh, people getting stuck in their cars and stuff. It's usually that moment of uh, there's a couple of cars on the road while the squall is coming through. Mm -hmm. They stop at a stoplight because the stoplight is red. And by the time it turns green, it snowed hard enough that they can't move anymore. Like that's literally how most people in Buffalo get stuck. Yes, you're just it, the squall comes through and there's you're nothing done. you can do. Yeah, that's why that's one of the reasons why um, the Bills game this past weekend, I, I got tagged um, a lot because the Bills game got delayed, but the Chiefs game did not. Is that the one and, where people are like digging out their seats in the stadium? Well, the Bills game, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so there were a lot of people who were there were some people who were just genuinely curious like why would buffalo but not mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and w- what really is the difference aren't they both dealing with with snow and blizzard and stuff and it's like well the 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 reality is that the cold everybody can kind of deal with but right. the snow squalls make it dangerous to actually get to and from the stadium oh god yeah and it's not only a outdoor stadium, but that place where the stadium is, um, there's, it's not in the middle of the city or anything. There's not a lot of anything around it. It's kind of a big oh. open field because literally the stadium is in the South towns. It's in uh, the suburbs. Oh boy. Pe- okay. Yeah. People don't realize Bill stadium is like nowhere near Buffalo city. It's a good, like 20 minutes outside the city. Um, so when the squalls come through, <laughs> snow can just like jump into the stadium. It's so ridiculous. So that's why they canceled and, and postponed right. because it was literally just dangerous. And then, yeah, yeah. They, they usually have uh, a, uh, I'm trying to remember what they were called. There's a whole series of people that they're not volunteers. They get paid, but mm-hmm. they're, it's just like a not even a part-time job. It's literally an on-call we got to get the snow out of the stadium for the game. You, you know, come on by with your shovel and we'll pay you 20 like bucks an hour. Like Snow Minutemen? Shovel. Kind of. There used to be a name for for those folks. I can't remember what it was, but because, you know, I'm right. old and it's been a while. 
but yeah, that was if you saw people in the stadium before the Bills game, literally just with snow shovels. That's exactly that's what was going on. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, funny. I mean, it makes sense for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the the Chiefs game and. I'm not going to claim to be an expert on when or you should or shouldn't cancel games or what was going on with the Chiefs game or anything, but my understanding is the reason the difference was it was just really cold. Cold. But mm. not so cold as to be dangerous. So there you go. Gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah. I love Buffalo, but it's a weird place. I mean, I think everyone can say that about where they live, can't they? Probably. Probably. There's I think everybody's got... about where you live. Yeah, just different ways that it's odd. Well, and my parents, where I grew up... Um, I think I've talked about this before on the stream, but my, my childhood home, where I grew up, is literally seven to ten minutes away from the stadium oh wow uh it's real close so like on on days and where there were a game i could walk outside and if and the bill scored you could hear them cheer uh it was that oh, close fun and uh, it also means that a lot of the time news reporters will hang out kind of in that general area especially oh. for like snow events mm-hmm and I, it wasn't this past winter, but the like a year ago, uh, Buffalo made all the news because they had that squall that the storm that happened that went on for so long that oh, right. they yeah. broke snowfall records. Yeah, the place where they measured that that new, I think it was like a Guinness Book of World Records for the amount of snow that fell in that period of time, uh -huh. is in Orchard Park literally like two minutes from my house oh, and funny. five minutes from the stadium <laughs> oh funny Go <laughs> Luke figure. pulled up a, a, a TikTok at one point because he's visited uh, he's, he's come home with me to visit the parents and he pulled it up and he, he was like isn't that the neighborhood that you grew up in I'm like yeah <laughs> wow so you got a like, little uh, claim to fame oh. mm -hmm. but yeah Orchard Park is a weird place, but fun. That's it. Still sounds should, pretty cool. I should stop talking yep. about my childhood home and actually look because we're, oh, we're getting toward the end close. of things. And yes, we are. Mm. Right miss. Okay, so let's. I'm gonna put brushes down, and I think. Are you at a good point to stop where you are? Because I want to be sure we get the jublix, jublix, the ux uh, washed on this base before we wrap it up for the day. Uh. Am I at a good spot? Eh, I'm at a spot. You're at a spot? Okay. I'm, so let's, I'm halfway let's take through a break. the fourth leg, but I could yeah, definitely stop. I mean, I'm kinda, yeah. yeah, so let's stop with the dragon. What we want to do is go back and... Oh, hello, ladies. I forgot I brought the other dragons over. I'm going to grab the Geoblix wash, and okay. we're going to put this onto the base itself. And actually, I'm going to kind of use my paper plate as a little cheat here. And just make sure we get the wash on this, so this one's going to be up and ready to go when it comes time to kit bash this later. Ew. Now I'm putting this green wash on the brown stone because again, Dargons, black Dargons are swamp dwellers basically. So I want to kind of give it like a swampy feel. So I'm yeah. just going to go in and just start spreading this around. And a little of this is going to go a super long way. Yeah, especially the being such a different color. Yeah. You can definitely see the difference already yeah it's now it's when nice, it though, dries like it. when it dries the brown will kind of pop out more i might just this might be like a one dip brush treatment I'm not even kidding yeah but we are coming to the end of the show so any last minute questions about mini painting or idol champions or any of that uh make sure you stick those in chat and then mm -hmm. Uh, stick around because uh, we should have Sean after us with Ooh. formation save. I'm going to triple check because I don't want... Yep, Sean is uh, directly after us with formation save. So if you're looking for 
even more detailed help for how you can make your formations be awesome and do awesome things, uh, stick around. And formation save is unique because uh, you can actually send in your your game to Sean mm-hmm. and your specific uh, party and say, hey, I need help with this. And he can, he basically we can clone your game instance and play like we're in your game. It's not actually in your game. Uh, it's a it's a cloned it's version, a but we can pull up. Yeah. Exactly, but he can pull up like uh, not just what champions you've got, but like what their gear is and all of the uh, all the different factors that can go into how successful right. you are. Um, and so he can get real detailed with a lot of help, and it's super fun. Absolutely. So definitely stick around for that because it's it's fun watching him pull up a game and be like, oh. Hey, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> look so, what you've got going on. Now these are all set and ready for the base to get a more swampy foliage treatment. But like I said, yeah. I want to make sure this dries. This is the last thing we're doing for today. And uh, well, as we wrap this up, don't forget, take this weekend. Make sure if you haven't yet to log into the game and get your mama K. Yeah. Uh, no, really, really Please get yourself a Carlock. Please. Please, please mm-hmm. give Mama K some love. Um, so, yeah, before your chance runs out as of Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific, okay? If you don't do it this weekend, then when will you? You have to wait till Time Gate weekend. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so, that is going on. And then also, it is Friday, which means it is the start of the weekend, which means it is the Psychomancers Allies weekend. Um, this is what you get in our newsletter. If you sign up, you get a free gold allies chest that is sent to your email address and you get to claim it in the game and get some yummy, excellent goodies uh, for your gameplay this weekend. And these fantastic champions that you can see over here are the ones that you want to work with and play around with because, you know, they got some cool things happening. Uh, so if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, log into the game and get signed up as well. We'll send you once a week something free, something cool, something fun to go with our weekend buff and um, every so often we'll send you another newsletter just, you know, as an FYI, news happening in the game whatsoever, but it's not, it's not like, you know, how you sign up for some newsletters and you swear to God you get five a day. We don't do that. We Mm -hmm. don't do that. You get one Mm -hmm. a week. One. Just one. Um, And, yeah, so that is everything that's going on in the game right now, Uh, and thank you so much to Gabe for helping with all the questions from the lovely chat this week. Thank you for all of your questions as well. It was so much fun. And we're going to jump back into, you know, painting the Dargans. But they're almost, they're they're starting to get to be black. Yeah. So we're we're going to add some more black. We're going to keep painting these black next week and doing some more fun detail work. And uh, like Lauren said, stay tuned for a formation save. And until then, uh, take care, everyone. Have a great weekend. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.